Our next new board member is uh, Michael Malamphy. Uh, Michael is co-owner of a popular Yorkville Tavern, Ryan's Daughter, on East 85th Street, uh, as well as an actor who trained first in his native Ireland. And as of December 9th, Michael is a newly minted U.S. citizen from County Cork. Uh, Michael, welcome to CV8 Speaks. Thanks and, very uh, much. Thanks, congratulations. David. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Congratulations. And call me Mick, by all means. All my friends call me Mick. Okay. That's what everybody kind of knows me by, so by all means. You, well, you got it. Even though you've been a resident since uh, 2002, how does it feel to raise your hand and swear allegiance to uh, a new country? It's, uh, it's, it's quite exciting. I am, I'm looking forward to it. It's something I've wanted to do for a long time. Um, just running a business and other things kind of got in the way. But um, earlier this year, with, uh, with like the election going on, there was a lot of things kind of came up that I just felt I really wanted to you know, cement my, um, my citizenship, nail it down. And uh, it, was quite, it was quite exciting, quite exciting to do it. Uh, it was actually the morning after the last presidential election was when I actually sat down in the building downtown with hundreds of other immigrants from all over the world um, to go in and take the, uh, the interview that you have to do uh, in order to become a citizen. And um, it was a very poignant uh, moment. Um, the, the irony wasn't lost on me that after an election that you know had uh, immigration really front and center in a lot of the debates and that uh, I was sharing a room here with people from all over the world, Muslims, Jewish people, you know, people from Asia, from Latin America, people speaking different languages, and we're all here together going into the same room to uh, become U.S. citizens. Um, it's, it's, it's certainly a, a huge milestone for me, and um, even when I look around, everyone in New York City has had somebody in their family at one stage or another hold their hand up and take the oath and become a citizen. So uh, it's, it's really, really, it's, it's an honor to be part of the club. <laughs> it's, even though you've been here for a number of years, it's still an emotional experience. To certainly, work. yeah, certainly, it certainly was. I realized in preparing for this talk that uh, we have 50 members on our community board. It looks like you're the only one who represents small businesses as wow. a partner in a, in a tavern. Yeah. Um, small businesses are the lifeblood of our community which has been hurt by the subway construction. A lot of people have lost their businesses. The bars, the restaurants, the retailers, the, the shoemakers, the, the mom and pop stores, some people call them. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what a community is all about. And you yeah. <laughs> have, have an opportunity to represent a lot yeah, of people. A lot of people, yeah. Well, it's, it's not lost on me that, uh, I mean, every single person, pretty much every single person that walks in the door of our business, uh, they live in a the neighborhood. They're part of the community as well. and. Um, as somebody who's stood behind a bar for many years, you do get to hear lots and lots of opinions and lots and lots of uh, a variety of opinions and uh, you don't always necessarily agree with them. And um, you are kind of, uh, I suppose, you know, you have to be a diplomat, but um, it's, important to, uh, it's important to take all those opinions on board, you know, and to respect other people's opinions. Um, I'm shocked that I'm the only person on the Community Board 8 that represents like a small business. One thing I've been um, very, uh, energized about is letting other friends of mine, other colleagues that I know who run small businesses in the neighborhood to come to the meetings, to come to the full board meeting to see what happens, to see what goes on. I think a lot of small business people in the neighborhood don't understand um, what the community board does. Uh, it, if it wasn't for me and my business, I would never have come to the community board in the first place. That's the reason I started going to the meetings. Uh, my business partner said something to me a couple of years ago. He said, you know, a lot of small businesses end up in front of various community boards when there's an issue, or if mm -hmm. there's a problem. And um, it doesn't need to be like that. You know, we can become part of the solution with our neighbors, with our fellow community members. And uh, that's something that I've really learned in the last, in my first six or seven months serving on the board. It's something that I really learned that uh, it is a place where we can actually solve issues. It's a place where we can get together and explain exactly what we do as small businesses. And, um, it's been a fantastic experience so far, and it's definitely something that's very rewarding as a business owner. Many people don't realize that the requirements for service on the community board are that you live, work, or have a significant interest in the community. Mm -hmm. So somebody could live in, in another part of the city, but if they've got a business in the neighborhood, in the community, they should think about applying. Well, absolutely. It's, it's funny you just mentioned uh, shoemakers. We had a shoemaker right across the street from us for the last 50 years. And uh, we threw a nice little party from last year because we just wanted to let people know that, you know, here's mm -hmm. somebody who's been on our street, on 85th Street, for the past 50 years, mending people's shoes. And simply because, A, you know, he was 
about time to retire anyway. But there's a business that people just don't avail of anymore, you know. So, you know, with, with changing times comes changing economies. And this guy's, you know, he went out of business, but, you know, we wanted to give him a good send off. And we actually have his old neon shoe sign hanging at the back of the bar now as a little homage to, you know, all the years he spent on our little block. <laughs> I've got to ask you about the other side of your uh, uh, your professional life, which is uh, theater work. Right. Um, how'd you get started? You used a phrase, treading the boards. Treading I never heard boards. that one. How'd really? you get started in that? Uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty common uh, phrase back home anyway in Ireland. Um, my grandmother used to take me to the Cork Opera House when I was... I was, when I was a kid, when I was a nipper, I can't even remember. And um, she would, uh, she used to say, you could be up there someday, you know, you could be up there. And I was always thrilled to kind of see the Christmas pantomimes that we used to, that used to be put on. And um, I just kind of, I just, I just took to performing. I loved it. Whenever the school plays would come around, you know, you, you do that here as well in the States. Like we have our annual school play at home in Ireland. I was always auditioning, wanting to be involved, playing the cowardly lion, you know, playing, you know, all these little characters. And um, when it came to college and when it came to, you know, choosing a career, I really couldn't see anything other than theatre. Um, I love the theatre. I think the theatre is very important. Um, I think it's a wonderful reflection. Not always a wonderful reflection, but it is a reflection of who we are as people. It's a, an ancient way of communicating with each other. And I went off and studied for three or four years, went to drama school and just started auditioning, getting involved. And of course, at the same time, I was working in bars to supplement it. So when I eventually relocated to New York as an actor, you kind of, I think a lot of actors have this story. They end up working in bars and, you know, one thing takes off or the other thing takes off. But uh, it's, uh, it's something I've put on the back burner the last couple of years because we're really trying to grow the business quite a bit. and. Um, we're, we're, we're heavily involved on, with the bar. Uh, being an actor is a full-time gig. You know, when you go to see a play, you sit in the audience for an hour or two. Uh, what you don't see is the hours, the hours and hours and hours that go into actually getting it up, getting up and running, rehearsals, um, getting under the skin of other characters. It's a full-time gig, you know. Yeah, what about TV? I've done a little bit of TV. Um, I still get residual checks from a, a, an episode I did of The Good Wife a few years ago. Um, some of those checks, <laughs> they don't amount to more than what the stamp on the envelope is, but you know, it's, it's, it's nice to have them. It's nice to see that four years of drama school has paid off a little bit. Um, I've done quite a few commercials, voiceovers for um, different whiskey brands and Tourism Ireland also. And I'm actually working on a project at the moment, which is due out next fall. But um, it's something that's kind of been kept under wraps right now. But uh, when it comes out next fall, you'll, people will see it and know about it. So I'm looking forward to that. You've got a, a, the kind of work that does allow you to take opportunities when they come along. So I, I hope yeah. there's more of them and let us know. I will indeed, uh, yeah, I will indeed. I've actually done quite a lot of them at the Irish Repertory Theatre down in Chelsea there. It's a wonderful little institution here in the city. Um, they're one of the few actual repertory theatres that are working year round. They give a lot of work to lots of actors, lots of theatre professionals. And... Um, they're a wonderful group to work with. They actually have a play running at the moment. Um, it might not be running when it goes to air, but uh, it's called The Pigeon of the Taj Mahal. And it's by one of our most important writers in Ireland at the moment called uh, Alicia Sexton. Um, I've worked quite a lot with Origin Theatre Company. Um, they produce a lot of European playwrights. They're behind the first Irish theatre festival every year. And they actually produce quite a lot of work at 59 is 59, which is in our, it's in our community board area. It's uh, down on 59th Street mm -hmm. and uh, between Madison and Park, I think it is. Wonderful space, and um, Origin, wonderful company. And uh, again, like you said, uh, having a, a career in the bar restaurant business allows me time to pursue my acting um, career also. We also have produced plays upstairs at the bar. We put on readings. We, I've got many friends involved in theatre who use the space for readings of new plays, all that sort of thing. So it's, it's, it's really nice that I'm able to marry two of my passions together like that. Without Plugging a business, Ryan's Daughter, is a popular place. Yeah, it's, uh, and a, a lot of clubs use it for meetings. Yep. Um, so you've, you've built up a, a community. We were very proud of that. That's, like, that's a little mission that myself and my partner, James Girding, um, really takes seriously is, like we said, small businesses are the fabric of communities. Um, we love hosting 
different groups and associations. We have the Multiple Myeloma um, Research Foundation have days with us for Marathon Sunday. We've got a Pint of Science, which is a, a group of people who come in and they give little talks about anything to do in the, in the world of science. We have the, uh, the Historical Society of the Upper East Side um, come into us quite a bit. And something I'm really proud about is we've just actually managed to raise $2,500 for the Good Shepherd Services, which are located down in Brooklyn. And uh, they provide um, what they've been trying to provide for the last few years. And this is the first year it's happened is they provided a space for disadvantaged kids in the bed area of Brooklyn, a place to come and play indoor soccer mm -hmm. from six o'clock to nine o'clock every uh, Friday night, which is, an air, which is a, a bit of time that's really, really kind of, um, it can be a dodgy time for young kids. Sure. They're just out of school, the weekend's beginning. So instead of being out in the streets with nothing to do, they get to play indoor soccer. They play soccer all year round, but from November to February, it's the weather it doesn't really allow for it. So we're very proud to be associated with them, with the Bedford Stye Athletic Club. It's been a pleasure, pleasure. Uh, visiting with you. Thanks I very much. I have a feeling that uh, when the borough president's office sees this show, they might start appointing more <laughs> small business people to uh, well, community boards. Uh, but we, need, we also need the small business people to be uh, engaged and to actually, you know, go out and, and seek out their community boards. I think that's a really well, important first step as well. maybe that's our job to reach out to them. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Sir, thanks thank very you. much, David. Congratulations on the citizenship. Thank you very much, a pleasure, thanks.